celebrate uh, the wedding of uh, Jude and Jim. This is going to be a pretty spectacular day, I'm sure. For them, they're all smiles. <laughs> Jim smiles. <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy and I don't blame you. They're both very wonderful people and it's a wonderful day for both of them and for everyone who gets to join in today. I'm going to this one. So, um, we're ready to go ahead and get started. This is an honorable estate instituted and blessed by God in paradise before humanity's fall into sin. In marriage, we see a picture of the communion between Christ and his bride, the church. Our Lord blessed and honored marriage with his presence and the first miracle at Cana in Galilee. This estate is also uh, commended to us by the Apostle Paul as good and honorable. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into inadvisably or lightly, but reverently and deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which it was instituted by God. This, the union of husband and wife in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for the mutual companionship, help, and support that each person ought to receive from the other, both in prosperity and in adversity. Marriage was also ordained that man and woman may find delight in one another. Therefore, all persons who marry shall take a spouse in holiness and honor, not in the passions of lust, for God has not called us to impurity, but to holiness. For these reasons, God has established the holiest state that Jim and Joyce may, uh, may wish to enter, or jo Judas, who's going to enter. The desire of prayer is to begin their marriage in the Lord's name with his blessing. I'm sorry. The first reading we're going to talk about is coming from Genesis 2. The Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. Then the Lord said, God, God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make a helper fit for him. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird from the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every little thing, every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not a helper. There was not a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon this man. And while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed, it up, closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man had made a woman brought her to the man. And the man said, This at last is bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. One of the scriptures that Jude and Jim picked out were from 1 John, which is about God's love, which is very fitting. This comes from 1 John uh, chapter 4. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us. So that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Because as he is also are we in the world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. Please be seated. Adam needed someone to be with him because being alone obviously was not good in God's eyes. And today we still find that's not always the case, being in the best situation, being alone. Sometimes that's a gift people can have. The Apostle Paul did. He had the gift of being alone. And that's perfectly fine. But for those in this world who wish to have someone to bear those troubles with and to have joy with together in this life, 
being married is a wonderful and beautiful thing. And in that scripture that we read in 1 John, it talks about God's love. God is love. And it's so hard to love truly without God in our lives because we have to really know what love is. God's love by giving his son Jesus Christ to us was an act of love, pure love. And so when we get married and we join together with someone, we want to love them and cherish them, honor them, because they're our partner, they're our helper. And when two people are put together, like we're going to see today, you know, with Jim and Jude, this is a wonderful thing because we're going to see two people who love each other so much that they want to spend their lives together. They want to be together. They enjoy each other's company. They enjoy their nights together. They enjoy their mornings together. They enjoy maybe the simple things in life, which we take for granted, like going to the grocery store together. Maybe little things around the house. Just being together. Just being one flesh. Being united is a beautiful thing. And I know I'm very happy. And I know you all are here because you are happy. For them and for their new lives, they're going to be set forward from today on. And so we bless them. We pray for them. We encourage them because we don't know what love is unless we know what God's love is. And I believe they know what God's love is. And they are going to give that to each other in the same way. They're going to share love. The same love that God gives us, they're going to give to each other. Jim, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife, to live together in a holy estate of matrimony as God ordained it? Will you nourish and cherish her as Christ loved his body, the church, giving himself up for her? Will you love, honor, and keep her in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, remain united to her alone, so long as you both shall live? Then say, I will. I will. Jude. Jude, will you take this man to be your wedded husband? To live together in a holy estate of matrimony as God ordained it? Will you submit to him as church as the church submits to Christ? Will you love, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, and remain united to him alone, so as long as you both shall live and say, I will. And for all of you witnessing this, I ask you, will you pray and encourage both Jim and Jude in their marriage, remembering at times that God wills them to live within their vows until they are parted by death? Then say, we will. We will. I believe there's some vows that uh, Jim and Jude are going to say to each other.
the first day we truly saw each other back in March. We were struck by intense feelings of connectedness, which soon turned to love. I became, in, became enthralled with your goofy humor and your constant need for touch in body and mind. I loved your sense of play and your willingness to try anything. I loved how you made me talk, even when it wasn't comfortable. You taught me the importance of forgiveness of myself and others. I love that you appreciate whatever gifts I might have and push me to develop them. You're a surprise that has delighted me in ways I never thought possible, and I cherish you for that. I promise to be a working partner in whatever we undertake, whether it's music or travel or garden or house or whatever. Wow, there's a lots of things we're gonna do. I promise to provide good food for your body and nourish that part of you <laughs> <laughs> that needs love, always love. I promise to be your memory when you forget and not get mad when you remember for me. I promise to join with you to work out our inevitable problems with talk, action, perseverance, and always a spirit of forgiveness. I promise to join with you in the service of the church to the best of my ability, because I know it's your heart's desire, and my heart's desire is to make you happy. I promise to remain as we have from the beginning, your soulmate, the other half of your heart. Almighty Father, you have generously created all things to serve us for good. Send your blessings upon this couple who shall well wear these rings as a constant reminder of their marriage fidelity. Grant us that your mercy they may live gladly and faithfully in this holy estate through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive this ring as a pledge and token of wedded love and faithfulness. In the name of the Father, and the, Father, and the Son, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please repeat after me. With this ring, I marry you. With this ring, I marry you. As a pledge and token of wedding love and faithfulness. As a pledge and token of wedding love and faithfulness. In the name of the Father, and the Son. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now that Jim and Jude have committed themselves to each other in holy matrimony, have given themselves to each other by their solemn pledges, and have declared the same before God and these witnesses, I pronounce them to be husband and wife in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jim, you may kiss the bride. <laughs> and just a few more things before we head off. There's going to be a blessing for the couple and just a few more prayers. But if you want to remain standing, you're more than welcome to. The Almighty and Gracious God abundantly grant you his favor and sanctify and bless you with the blessings given to Adam and Eve in paradise, that you may please him in both body and soul and live together in holy love until your life's end. And so please, if everyone would stand, we'll pray. Let us pray. Almighty, everlasting God, our Heavenly Father, grant that your blessings Jim and Jude may live together according to your word and promise. Strengthen them in faithfulness and love toward each other. Sustain and defend them in every trial and temptation. 
Help them live in faith toward you in communion of your holy church and in lovingly service to each other that they may enjoy your heavenly blessing through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And together we will say the Lord's Prayer as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you both peace. Amen. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Yep. So your address is 284 West Hickory Street. Everybody got that? Harvard. No. <laughs> go on Harvard. If you hit, go to the river, you've gone too far. Hickory yeah. Street's the last through street on Harvard. On the right. You're going to go right. Good. Okay. Oh, Very good. Very good. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> Joe. You did. Thank you, Joe. Well, Congratulations. Thanks for coming. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Well, you know, when you. I was thinking I could do it. No, I need to. Yes. Welcome to the family. Joe's busy. Thank you. Congratulations. Very nice. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a ride. Yeah. <laughs>